there's a series of articles going around over the, the past few days saying that the era of cheap Chinese solar and batteries is coming to an end. Electric themselves say this is happening. Experts say this is happening. There'll be no more cheap Chinese solar and batteries because of new Chinese regulations. Is this true or is it scaremongering from the usual suspects? Well, I've got some actual facts for you that um, dispute these claims and call them out as just straight up bullshit. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And as you can tell, I believe this headline from Electric, the era of cheap Chinese solar and plus storage is ending. Here's why is utter clickbait nonsense. To be fair on them though, they're basing their information off an interesting report. And here's what Electric had to say. Solar and storage prices are about to rise after a year and a half of record lows, according to new data from Wood Mackenzie. So they're quoting Wood Mackenzie for their facts. Equipment procurement costs for solar and energy storage will jump around 9% starting in Q4 2025, marking the end of the bargain pricing developers have enjoyed for the last 18 months. That's because China, they say, is changing the rules. So solar plus storage prices are going up. Now you can tell by my skepticism, this is, in my opinion, nonsense, but here's what they said. Wood Mackenzie points to three major drivers behind the price spike in renewables, particularly solar and batteries. China's polysilicon production exploded between 2022 and 2024, creating a glut and pushing prices to unsustainable lows. But new government guidelines are now forcing producers to slow down, cutting utilization rates to 55 to 70 percent. As a result, polysilicon prices surged 48% in September 2025 alone. Production cuts across the value chain. Solar module makers are also reducing operating rates with major producers running at just 55 to 60% of capacity by mid-2025. Outdated PERC cell lines are being phased out, further shrinking available capacity. Kind of contradicting themselves here though by saying that production lines are running at 55 to 60% capacity but then saying shrinking available capacity just because some cell lines are being phased out. Now, as far as I can tell, 55 to 60%, that's pretty much half capacity. I'd say that um, there won't be a problem with capacity numbers and overcapacity is the norm in China. That's not going to end anytime soon. Anyway, they go on to say the end of China's export tax rebate. Starting in Q4 2025, China will scrap its 13% VAT export rebate or value-added tax rebate on solar modules and battery storage systems. This fiscal change will ripple through global pricing since China supplies over 80% of the world's solar modules and 90% of the lithium-ion phosphate battery packs. That policy shift means developers worldwide will face higher costs in the US storage and solar projects. Relying on Chinese equipment will likely see about a 9% cost increase in Q4. Analysts expect inverters to lose their export rebate soon, Two, adding more upwards price pressure. For the past year and a half, Chinese manufacturers, says Electric, have been selling solar modules and storage systems at rock bottom prices, trying to move over supply even while posting losses. Modules hit record lows of $0.07 to $0.09 per watt in 2024 and early 2025. But with government intervention, that price war is ending. This is about to change, said Yana Hrishko. Senior Research Analyst and Head of Global Solar Supply Chain at Wood Mackenzie. The Chinese government has intervened to stabilize the market and developers globally will have to adjust their procurement expectations accordingly. Wood Mackenzie says the shift represents a structural correction towards sustainable margins, not just a temporary market adjustment. This shift will ultimately benefit the industry's long-term health, they said. Manufacturers will finally have room to reinvest and innovate, but developers will need to revisit budgets and renegotiate supply deals for production scheduled after November 2025. So Wood Mackenzie is implying that manufacturers have never had room to reinvest and innovate. 
That's what they said, direct quote. Manufacturers will finally have room to reinvest and innovate. Or maybe Electric said that, I don't know. But come on, have you not been paying attention to the solar industry itself? Panels are definitely being innovated. The efficiency is improving constantly. Their ability to operate in shade is improving. Uh, the panels are getting becoming more efficient. So I'm not really sure what they're on about there. Bottom line says electric is ultra cheap solar and storage gear is ending. The next phase of the energy transition will come with higher but more sustainable prices. Now this is all a utopian fantasy, for, maybe for Americans, I don't know. I, I really don't understand what they're going on about here. This will never happen, right? What changed in China when the Chinese government said no more of this price gouging, no more of this bloodbath? Did anything change? No. In fact, prices have gone down since then. They haven't gone up. Guys, this is nonsense. It's not backed by any kind of facts whatsoever. I don't understand why Wood McKenzie or Electric or any other publications support this fear-mongering. It's just fear-mongering. The truth is this, sodium is going to disrupt the industry. Lithium ion phosphate battery producers in China have to contend with new sodium ion batteries, which are better in every way. They have the same energy density, in fact, slightly more in some cases, depending on the LFP battery you're comparing them to, basically the same, but they are better in every other way. They last five times longer. No one's actually mentioning this, but what that means is a sodium ion battery, which is cheaper already than lithium ion phosphate, and lasts five times longer, somehow that won't have an effect on the marketplace. Somehow lithium ion phosphate battery producers in China uh, and NMC producers or whoever else won't be affected by Cadle saying, you know what, we want to take market share globally. We are providing sodium ion batteries, which are, like I said, better at handling cold, better at handling heat, very, very good for energy storage, don't need as much cooling, very, very good for energy storage, last much longer, very good for energy storage, and are cheaper the lithium ion phosphate. And somehow that will have zero effect. In fact, if anything, LFP batteries are suddenly going to become more expensive, even though sodium will disrupt them. This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It makes sense if we're living in fantasy land, but we live in the world of capitalism. And that's how things work. You have to compete. Manufacturers will be forced. Once, I mean, Buity is already seeing that Cadle are selling their sodium ion batteries they're pre-selling them to manufacturers, EV manufacturers, battery storage manufacturers. They're pre-selling those batteries at lower prices than LFP. No one's going to buy LFP. The market's going to die. What's going to happen? Massive overutilization. I mean, as in underutilization, I should say. Manufacturers will have way more production than they can actually sell. And in fact, there's already massive underutilization worldwide for battery factories. That is the facts. That's CATL. That's everyone. BYD, everyone. Even though their sales are massively going up, they still have massive underutilization of their production lines. And companies will have no choice. The Chinese government is not going to say, just go bankrupt if you're one of these big battery providers or one of these big solar companies. Now, getting to the solar issue, could solar prices, panel prices go up? They could. Is it likely? Well, no. Of course, that's not likely. Um, Panel prices might go up by 5%, but what will happen in the, but what will happen during that period of time? What they do is they find ways to give you more value. In other words, they'll probably improve, improve the efficiency by 5% or the amount of watts per panel by 5% and then charge 5% more. There won't be any real difference in prices. This is unlikely to change anytime soon. This is what they've been doing now for more than a decade. Guys, don't believe the fear mongering here. If you've seen any of this stuff, Renewable energy will continue to disrupt the global fossil fuel market. It doesn't matter what Wood McKenzie or anyone else believes, whatever fantasy they're peddling. I personally think Wood McKenzie has been paid by fossil fuels to promote this garbage in order to get companies to plan for an option that's not renewables, plan for something else. Oh, it's all going to go up in price. Don't even bother with that. Plan for coal, plan for gas. That's going to be the better option for you because renewable prices, they're going to go up. That's what it sounds like to me. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for listening to my rant. Bye-bye. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description 
and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.